Hello, my friends. It's me, Karen Valentine. Welcome back to my channel. And if this is your first time here, um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for, um, for joining me. So today we are going to um, work on the hair from um, Yasmin uh, by Mariola Budek. And um, I'm going to try, I'm going to do something kind of scary to myself. <laughs> Um, I am going to do a, um, I think I'm going to do a, an ombre gray, um, br brownish, grayish, you know, one of those cool, um, hair colors that all the beautiful young women, um, were doing a while ago and it just looked really cool. So I thought I was going to give it a try and I do have a, uh, a couple of reference photos that kind of inspired me to pick that color. So I haven't done one like that before. I also have not used the Pablos, which I'm going to use for that hair color before. So it's going to be a new experience. But before I get to that, um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the Caran d'Ache Luminance, um, Luminance Portrait colors. So I have had several um, requests, both in comments here on the channel, but also on my Facebook page, on my Instagram, um, you know, direct messages through my Instagram on what colors I would recommend that people get if they want to get luminance for skin. So I went through my um, color swatch charts see I wonder if I can zoom oh, colors change just a tiny little bit but at least I'll be able to fit a little bit more in here so um, here are my charts and so I went through and I marked with a little um, a little dot um, all the colors that are in the new portrait set so I have, I actually have 99 um, colors here. And the reason that I don't have 100 is because um, four of the colors are um, just available open stock. They're not in a set. And um, one of those colors I chose not to spend the money on. Um, and that was natural, natural russet. So um, that's why I only have 99 colors. So if a color um, that you see here, let's see how, yeah, we're probably missing a few. If a color that you see um, does not have a black, uh, a dot on it, it means that it is um, part of the 76 set, the original big set. And then if it has a dot on it, it's part of the, of the, tw of the 20 portrait set. Um, it's not a skin tone set. It's a portrait set. So you're going to find colors in that portrait set. Um, some greens, some blues, several, several new blues, um, greens, things like that in there, which, you know, help you to create a portrait, you know, maybe whether it be for eyes or for a background or whatever. Um, but they're beautiful colors, but they're not necessarily skin tone colors. So in addition to um, my swatching, I went through and I, I took my white um, Prisma <laughs> and I marked a white line across all of the um, colors that I use for portraits, for skin, either skin tone or lips. Um, I didn't include the ones for eyes because you can use any pencil to do the the eye color. Um, but as far as for skin tone and lips, I marked across. So my recommendation for skin, um, if you're going to just buy your pencils open stock and not buy the portrait set, are as follows. <laughs> Um, I love the anthroquinoid pink. Um, I am not sure if that is going to be discontinued or not. I cannot confirm that rumor, but I love that pink. I highly recommend it. Um, I use the anthroquinoid. 
wine owned carmine. However, um, if you're only buying a few, you know, like your minimum pencils for what you want to get for skin tones, you don't need that one. I just marked it because I got it in the skin, in the portrait set. Um, Pyroline Brown. Love this color. Um, this is part of the original set. Um, and it's a gorgeous color. So I, I do use that one a lot. Crimson Aubergine I also use for lips a lot. I really like that color. Um, Carmine Lake is a lovely color for lips. Um, these two colors are in the new portrait set, but I don't, for me personally, I like if you're trying to not spend um, a ton of money and you just want to kind of pick your minimums, um, you don't necessarily need those if you have the anthro pink even though they're very different a very different pink so it all depends on whether you want to you know spend money or not spend money so those are um those are a maybe um then we have light aubergine which is part of the original big set i use that for my when i add my purples um, to the skin. I also use violet brown when I add my purples to the skin. So if you want to choose, choose one or the other um, if you don't want to get both, but you're going to want a purple a purple um, to, to be in there. Um, okay, violet gray. I would get violet gray. I, um, that's a nice color for skin believe it or not. But if you watch my tutorials, then you, you know that I use that for skin a lot. Um, okay, let's see. Any other definite skin tones on this page? No. Okay, then we have the um, Dark Flesh, which is one of the new open stock colors. It is not part of either set. So you're going to want to get that because that is a wonderful color for deepening your shadows. It's got some purples in it. It's got some reds in it. It's a beautiful, beautiful brown. Um, Dark Flesh 40% comes in the portrait set. If you're going to buy open stock, I would get Dark Flesh 40%. I would get Dark Flesh 5%. Um, that one does not come in either set. That is an open stock pencil only. Um, Light Flesh 10% is a very nice color. I don't know that I would use it for an entire skin tone, but it's a nice color to add some golden, ye some yellows and to counteract some of the pinks um, that you get. So that's a good one to get. Um, I also like brown ochre 50%. That comes in the big set or you can get it open stock. Brown ochre 10% is a nice color. You can get that open stock. I like burnt sienna and Burnt Sienna 50%. If you have to pick between the two, if you're trying to keep your pencil number down, get Burnt Sienna 50%. I use that on almost every single portrait that I do. Um, Herculaneum Red is one of the new colors that comes in the um, portrait set. That's a nice color for... Um, I use that as an undertone for lips. I use it on in the eyes. I use it, you know, in the little water line that goes underneath the eyes because it's not as pink as the anthroquinone pink. It's a, that's a really nice color. Um, then we have burnt ochre 50%. I use that a lot for, um, t for, for warming up the skin, giving it a nice glow, giving it a little bit of a tan. I use that one a lot. Burnt ochre 10% I use all the time. So as far as like the main skin color, um, burnt ochre 10% and these dark flesh colors, kind of when you mix those all together, they make for a really nice um, light skin tone. Um, the dark flesh, the dark flesh, these three right here, those combined make a beautiful dark skin tone. So. They're really great. They're a really great pencil to have. Um, is that it? Um, I do use sepia, but it's, you know, like you don't need it. So really the those colors that I just mentioned, I would say would be your most important ones to get. 
so if they if they have a little white line running across it, I use them for skin tones. Um, and the only one on here on this page would be the violet gray. So there you go. That is that. Um, while we are at it, and I have these right here, um, I am working on a um, on a conversion chart for um, luminance to Prismacolor. So if I'm doing a luminance, um, if I'm using luminance colors, um, then I am doing this conversion chart to, for those of you who don't have luminance, um, you can refer to a chart like this um, to pick your colors. And it's taking me quite a long time. <laughs> um, the, the chart that I mentioned um, it, on the last video, um, I don't, no disrespect to, to the work that anybody put into a previous color chart, but I, I did get that color chart and I, um, had a look at it. And to be honest, 75% of the colors I looked at and went, what? That doesn't match. <laughs> what you so I decided to do my own chart, um, not all of them are um, straight, you know, a straight color to color. Um, in other words, um, because, you know, not, brands don't do that. Pencils don't do that. You, there's, there's no chart that's going to give you an exact color match to each color. Um, so on my chart, um, there are several where I've broken it down into using two different colors. So to get ultramarine violet, you use imperial violet and gray lavender. That would be an example. There's a there's quite a few of those. Um, to get anthro pink, mineral orange and blush pink get really close to anthro pink. So um, I am working on that, and um, I do think that I'll probably oh, um, put it up for sale. Um, It'll be very reasonable, but there's a lot of work that goes into it. And then if that is something that people are interested in, then I'm going to continue to make charts like that for all the um, pencils that I do um, colorings with. So I'll, um, I, I will do one for example, all of the, um, uh, what's that brand? <laughs> I just had, I just completely, my brain just completely stopped. The whole beans. I'm going to do one, you know, whole beans converted into Prismacolor. Um, I will figure out, you know, there will be some, um, some polychromos conversions. So if there's any kind of a conversion chart that you guys are interested in seeing from one brand converted into another brand, let me know what that is. Um, so I can add that to my list of charts to create. So that is it on that. We are going to start working on this beautiful page. And um, yeah, we're gonna use we're gonna use Pablo's for this. So um, let me show you my um, inspiration for this particular hair color. So this is the um, inspiration color. Um, for that I want to do for her hair. So it's kind of a black and brown tones up at the top, and then it ombres down to this kind of ash gray um, color at the bottom. And I, I, there was just something about it that I thought was really cool. I have no idea if it's going to look good with her skin tone or not. Um, I may have to make some adjustments. I, d I don't know, but I think that's what I want to do. So... That's what we're going to try. And um, uh, I'm just going to cross my fingers and hope it turns out okay. <laughs> so the colors that I am using for the skin, uh, not for this, for the hair, um, are Pablo's. Um, and I will, you know, I haven't done this yet. I probably should do this um in the description box down below, I'll give you the um, the the color conversions to Prismacolors in case you don't have Pablo's. Um, I don't, yeah. So 
that's that's what we'll do. I would imagine that you could probably fairly easily in Prismas find these colors because um, Prisma has a lot of really wonderful grays. So in the Pablos, I'm using ash gray, beige, cocoa, sepia, and charcoal gray. And away we go. I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm nervous because I have not done color like this before, not even in my Prismas. I've not used these pencils before other than swatching. So ah, here we go. Alrighty. So I want, you know, obviously the darkest colors to be up at the top. I don't know. I'm just going to do it and we'll see what happens. This is the um, ash gray. I'm debating if I want to start this. I think I'm going to start this side of the hair first. Because it has more of the ability for me to do that ombre. And if she turns out looking like an old lady, <laughs> then, then uh, well, that's the way it goes. It's only paper, right? It's only time and a little bit of paper. As I get further down here, I think more, I'll definitely use more of the light color. And then I can always come back in and add more too, so. husband was like, gray? What do you mean you're going to give her gray hair? <laughs> I was like, I know. But there, I do tend to occasionally, um, you know, stay too much inside my box. And um, I'm not one for doing you know, purple hair, blue hair, all of that. It's just not, it's, it's just not me. Um, even though I love seeing other colorists do it, I, it's just not, it's just not something that I do. Um, so going with like a gray or silver hair is different enough, but close enough to my, <laughs> to my taste, I guess. So, that's what we're gonna do. Okay. All right, so let's go to beige.
You know what, before I keep going, I'm gonna pick kind of a darkish color. I think I want dark. So I'm gonna do sepia and I'm gonna do her eyebrows because it's driving me crazy that she doesn't have eyebrows yet. I know. I think she's gonna look cool. I mean, she's got this huge giant tattoo on her, right? So she's gonna, she's gonna have to have hair color that's a little bit unique, I think. Boy, it's amazing just adding the eyebrows, what that does. Big help, I like it. Big, big help. I really, really like these Pablos. I was intending on doing, on swatching them out for you guys, but I, um, you know, other things came up and did I do these eyebrows completely um, uneven? I need to go up a little bit higher, but then this is too low. Hmm. I guess that's not too bad. Um, yeah, I was gonna swatch them out for you and then just, Things got in the way and it didn't um, it didn't happen but I swatched them on my tan paper because you know I use tan paper more than anything else um, okay back to sorry uh, back to beige <clears throat> is that right is that what I was using no no sorry what am I doing <laughs> Okay, beige. I got confused because Coco also has the word beige on it. All right, back to beige. Number 66403. Um, where was I going with that story? I don't remember anymore. I'm getting myself all kerfunkled. Oh, swatching Pablos. So um, I swatched them already on my tan paper. But if you guys are interested, I don't know. Are swatching videos really boring? Because <laughs> I don't know. But if you guys want to see me swatch the Pablos um, on white paper, I can do a side-by-side -side comparison of what the colors look like, you know, on white compared to tan paper. So if you want that, just leave a comment, let me know. Speaking of comments, every time you guys leave a comment, not only does it make me smile, it, it helps boost my videos up into the algorithms and lets them get seen by more people and, let, and gets them, um, gets the channel more visible to people who haven't found it yet and helps me grow my channel. Um, the same goes for every time you um, hit that like button. So, and I love hearing comments. I love hearing, I would love to hear some comments from some of you who don't normally leave comments because it just makes me happy. <laughs> it makes me smile. So, Leave a comment, let me know um, the kinds of things that you would like to see on the channel or um, what you think about my swatch chart idea, what kinds of pencils you would like to see me swat, um, do comparison um, charts for, that kind of thing. if I should have a little bit more of the um, ash gray down at the very bottom. I want to <clears throat> make sure that I don't accidentally go too dark. And 
this is the beige. I know it's really not showing up a whole lot yet because the because of the tan paper, but I think it'll be cool. Okay, let's do some of the ash gray at the very I'm gonna turn my page very top. Because even though we're going to go really dark up here, I still need to make sure that I have some highlights. Okay, beige up here. Once we start adding in the darker colors, that's when you'll really start seeing it, I think. Okay, switching to Coco. friend Allison turned me on to these pencils. She sent me a set because they're her favorite pencil. And um, man, did I just really fall in love with them <clears throat> when I tried them. They are a really lovely pencil. Um, and for those of us who are kind of pencil addicts, um, <laughs> they're, a great, they're a great brand to add to your repertoire. Um, they're harder than Prismas, um, but still creamy and blend beautifully. I really like them. So you are going to start seeing me doing, um, you know, other colored pencil brands other than Prismas. I know I've done a lot of Prismas. And for you guys who are kind of big time Prisma lovers like myself, um, I hope that that is okay. Because <laughs> um, there's so many other, there are so many other lovely pencil brands out there to play with. So. Um, I'm going to start doing pages with my whole beans, and uh, what else do I got? So I've got my Prismas, I've got my Luminance, I've got my Polys, my whole beans, my Pablos, and is that, I kind of feel like that's, those are my main brands, what am I missing? Whole bean, Polys, Luminance, Pablos, Prismas, yeah. And then I do have, you know, my Spirofarben, and I do have my um, uh, Artezas, which I could also do pages with. But so I will do. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> stopped mid thought there. Um, I will. I will use those as well, but. You'll probably mostly see those five brands. Okay, I'm I'm liking this so far. I've got to say, I really um, I'm liking it, and I know it's going to get better and better as we add the more of the dark for the contrast.
going to add some more ash gray. You know, it's sometimes you just got to kind of build it up until you know how much you want. I'd rather do less and keep adding than do too much and not be happy. So we really want this to look ombre, so we'll keep this nice and light down here. Okay, so I've done those and I've done a little bit of cocoa. I think I'm going to bring some cocoa, some more cocoa up here a little bit. Let's do some sepia. This is where it starts to get nice and ombre looking, I think. going to take my, um, sorry, that was probably really loud. Take my, um, ash gray. There we go. Okay. Back to sepia. Let's get some of this in up here. So I want the dark to stay around her, you know, up here in her roots. We've got one more even darker color to go for that still too, but I think this would all be dark. I'm starting to see other people's versions of this page coming out. I don't know. You know, everybody's seen the seen it, found it, fell in love with it, and has started to do it. And it's so fun to see how many different 
versions and what everybody's take is on the on the page. They're all so different and they're all so pretty. Um, Christy Color and Sketch, actually, <laughs> um, on the same day, we both uploaded, um, you know, our coloring of this page. And she's doing hers with pastel pencils. Um, so that's kind of cool. <clears throat> that is a medium that I have not tried yet, but I want to. I think they would go really well with pan pastels. Speaking of which, I was thinking of doing a pan pastel background on her. Um, I haven't used, other than the, the dog portraits um, that I did, I haven't used pan pastels very many times on this paper. So I think it'll be fun to try it out. Okay, so she's missing color completely right on this here. So let's do a little bit of uh, cocoa and back to sepia. Getting that nice <clears throat> blend from dark to light, I think, is going to be the hardest part. So I think I've really only ever done one other um, um, ombre hair color. And that was not a natural. That was like blonde to blue. Oh, well, there you go. See, I have done a crazy hair color. <laughs> okay, I'm really glad I picked this hair color. I really, really like it. Fix that right there, though. Okay. I think that's okay. All right, I do want to bring this down further, though, I think. I also find doing hairs on top of hair is a challenge sometimes when I'm trying to color it because it's it's not easy to make it look right. <laughs> This one needs something a little bit lighter in here. This is beige. Do some dark. I don't want to go too crazy, but I do want it down here a little bit. Cut 
because she the inspiration picture does have dark running all the way th through it but it's the at the bottom the dark color is mostly like underneath I'm not sure how I can make that evident but we'll try We're going to add some charcoal gray as our really dark color. So I think I'm going to do that, and then if I have to add more of this mid tone, I will. Charcoal gray. We need a lot more dark at the top. Where down do we go? It's
think still more dark. sure I'm plenty dark up top. Okay, this is the, the sepia. Let's use this to darken up here too. Ash gray. This one will be a fun one to put those um, single strand flyaway hairs on, I think. If I can do it with the Pablos, I don't, I'm not sure, I would imagine, but we can always always break out the Prisma White if we have to. <laughs> this is the sepia. I'm not sure if I said that or not. Okay, well, it's starting to feel um, like we got a kind of a good ombre going there, so I'm not sure what I need to do down here. I want to make sure that there's definition of the hair, so maybe even though we want this to be lighter down here, we still want some more darks. What am I doing? Normally I finish off the edge of my page. I didn't do that this time. Yep, nope. I think we're just going to cut off the bottom edge there. 
I wasn't thinking. was um, ash gray. This is beige again. husband just walked in the door. Okay. I feel pretty good about this. I think I want to do the other side of the hair. Oh, let's do, let's do this hair that's coming down in front of her face. Um... Mm. Beige. We'll just build up. And cocoa. And let's get our dark in there with sepia. How much of that was I out of frame for? Sorry, guys. Charcoal gray.
Okay, what do we think? I think I like it. I do, I do, I do. Is that, how do these blend? I'm curious. Pretty well. Yeah, they blend nice. Well, let's do some of that. I kind of think I need a little bit more dark bits down here. I don't want to make the hair look darker, but I think it needs some more um, separation bits where the dark underneath is showing through. All right, let's do the other side. Maybe I'll start with these hairs in front of her face. So, ash gray. Just for the highlights. We did these already, but... Um, I wonder if I even need beige. Probably beige for the bottom. I'm going to go cocoa. What point do those split? Okay, sepia.
gray. Oof. All right, so this is gonna be <laughs> this is gonna be a big clump of dark hair because somehow that got to be way too dark, but I don't think it's bad. Yeah, oh, that's that's fine. going to not do the rest of the these top hairs until I get the bottom hairs on here I think there's still something about this side here that I'm not sure I almost want to pull up the original I kind of think that's a hair Because it just looks, it doesn't look right. So, <laughs> I'm gonna treat that like a hair. That looks better. It, there was something about that. Okay, back to what I was doing. A um, little bit of this ash gray. So I'm just doing, I'm just doing lines in the areas that I want to be highlighted. I don't want a solid color of gray there. I want the darker color to come in and fill in between the lines so that it's just hairs picking up the highlight rather than the whole section of hair being lighter.
I don't even know what hair color you would call this. I don't know that I would call it gray, even though it has a lot of gray in it. Grayish. <laughs> God, I wish I had hair like hers. <laughs> okay, let's put in some... Oh, you know what? We've got a little bit of hair down here that I missed. So let's just do a little bit of that. This is starting to get blonde, gray. And let's sharpen this Maybe a little bit more of the white, of the, of the ash gray. Okay. All right, up to sepia. I'll try and stay in frame.
Okay, so there's a little... Maybe I should just cover it up. I don't know. There's a little highlight right there that is not matching the one above. So I think I'll cover that one up. I, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that I'm not even going to do this hair until I get the background done. Although, if I don't put anything there, it might just cover it right up and I'll never be able to see it. So, never mind. I'm changing my mind. just leave that like that for now and then I can always <clears throat> add more This is where using a brush and paint over the top really comes in handy because it's hard to get the hair underneath the, the strands that go on top. It's hard to get it to look consistent without covering up the hair above it. time for what is this this is sepia i think it's time for some charcoal gray
be just a little bit too light for up high. So I'm going to just darken that a little bit. Okay, that might have to do. Better. And this doesn't look right here. Beige. Or maybe light beige. Ash gray. Alrighty. Back to charcoal gray. I want cocoa. Nope, sepia. A little bit more sepia down here. I'm going to zoom out a bit, you guys, because I just think I'm way too zoomed in. And if I was out of frame for a lot of that, I sincerely apologize. Question now becomes do I stick with the color as it is which I, I actually do kind of really do like or do I go even darker on top because the um, she's quite dark up there and, you know, kind of down inside underneath. So I can't decide if I want to break out like a black black. I, I, I'm kind of thinking that I do. Um, because the charcoal gray, you know, is not super black. So just for We're trying. I'm going to bring out ivory black, which I think is even darker than one of their other blacks. Yep, black is not super black. Ivory black is quite black. So that is what we're going to do. Okay. We sharpen it to a nice sharp point. It's 
fun to um, come up with some new color combos for hair because I, oh, I like that. I do tend to, you know, kind of do the same ones. So this side is showing more of the underside of her hair. So I'm thinking that it should be a little bit darker because we're seeing more of the undertones. So There's this big chunk that does not look right to me. So I'll use sepia to break that up a little bit. And then black. So, this is beige. I don't know what to do here. Let's do, um, let's do ash gray. Start there and then go to cocoa. Well, I don't know how dark or light I want these strands to be. I'll 
little bit darker up here. Sepia. Probably have to work on that a little bit after we get the the owl done. We have to decide how light to have some of these highlights. I mean, they're they're to to my mind, they're man-made highlights. They're not highlights from the sun. They're the stripiness that the <laughs> hairdresser would have done um, to give her that look. So I do like, I do like it. I just some of them might be a little bit too heavy. I like it. I don't know why, but I still think her hairline needs to be even darker, and I don't know how to get it to be as dark as I need it without maybe breaking out a pen or a prisma. I might break out a pen. All right, let's try that. Let's do this. Um, this dual tip um, alt art alternatives. I've used them before on this channel. I've used them, um, yeah, a couple times before. Um, I get them at, at um, Joanne and they're like a dollar something a piece. And what I like about using them is even when you're doing black, Um, even when you're using like a Prisma black, you can't always get it to be as dark as you want. And so I find that in using a pen, it actually even darkens the Prisma. And I blend it. I don't leave it just sitting as is. I always blend it out with my finger a little bit. But it gets it darker than just the pencil could get it. I think any water-based black pen would probably work if you don't have a Joanne near you. I'm just blending that a little bit better. But I think you can see that the black gets even darker. I go too crazy. Do it slow so that you're not <laughs> regretting any decisions. I, I like it. I think might be there.
So we have a little skinny highlight here and then all of a sudden it gets fat, which does not look right to me. So I'm gonna break that up. I like Yeah, um, I might even put a little bit of black in her eyebrows. Mostly underneath. So there we go. That is our ombre. I don't even know what to call it. I have to come up with a name. I will come up with a name for that. Ombre ash gray. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's an ash gray. Ombre ash gray hair. That sounds good. <laughs> All right. So. On the next video, we'll do the owl. Well, basically all of her tattoo. And then depending on how long that takes, we're gonna try a um, pen pastel background on this paper. And I think it'll work pretty well. Yep. All right, cool beans. Thanks so much for hanging out with me, guys. I really, really appreciate it. And um, again, please don't forget to give me a little like, a little thumbs up on the video. Um, leave a comment. All that good stuff. So thanks. Until I see you guys again, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Happy coloring. Bye.